Okay, so um, I'm Henrik Kranquist. I'm a team leader for uh, the team in uh, DG Employment, the Commission dealing uh, working with the uh, Eures portal. And I'm Pascal Woodruff. I'm a member of Henrik's uh, team. I'm an IT project coordinator, uh, working on different IT projects linked uh, to the Eures portal. So we have quite a challenge now. We have 10 minutes to uh, present the vision of Euro services. We'll do our best. And nevertheless, I will spend a few seconds just to, uh, um, on what is Euros for those of you who haven't yet come across Euros perhaps. It's a cooperative network between uh, public employment services and partnered organizations together with the Commission. It covers the whole of the European Economic Area plus Switzerland, altogether 32 countries. It's there to support mobility of workers and it does it by providing placement, job search, job matching services and uh, information and guidance services related to that. It consists of two main pillars. It's a human network of some 900 Euros advisors working in these employment services who provide support to job seekers and employers. Then they have more than 150,000 contacts per month with job seekers and employers. And then we have the e-services pillar that we will uh, look at today. It's the Euros portal, eurospa.eu, uh, that sees more than 3 million visitors who run 3 million visitors per month. We have a million job seekers uh, registered with their CVs and 30,000 employers. And uh, thanks to this exchange of uh, job vacancies with the employment services that we will talk more about, we, we uh, can display more than one, it's, it's uh, even 1.8 million job vacancies today, I think. So, Euros was, uh, it celebrates its 20th anniversary next year. So. Leaving the teens means also that you have become more mature and can take on new challenges. One of the, so we are reforming the network and uh, some of the issues to be addressed is to increase the transparency on the labor markets in terms of vacant jobs and available job seekers and to improve the matching cap capability. <clears throat> there are some other things but we will focus on this. And, Eurus loves ESCO. And why do we love ESCO? It's because the vision for the Eurus portal is to become the European interoperability platform, semantic interoperability platform for both job vacancies and CVs. And in order to do that, we need this common language for occupation skills and competencies, qualifications. But that is not all, of course. We also need other standard formats. So we are working on uh, through European HRXML standard formats for vacancies and CVs. There is also a need for some gentle force and there is an obligation on the member states already today to exchange vacancies. This will be slightly increased and we will also oblige the member states to set up national interoperability platforms connected to Euros to make it possible for other partners than the employment services, the private employment services and other partners to participate in this exchange, the interoperability. And now Pascal will show this in practice. So I will show you uh, how the e-services that we currently provide to our users work and how they will evolve towards the vision described by Henrik. So today we provide two main e-services to our users through the Euros portal, the CV search and the job search. The CV search is fairly straightforward. Job seekers can create their CV online, which is stored in a database and can then be searched by employers using the CV search application to find job seekers matching their criteria. ESCO is used in the structure of the CV to express occupations and skills of the job seekers. <laughs> On the job vacancy side, it's a bit more complicated because we don't provide, uh, we don't allow employers to create their job vacancy on the Euros portal directly. They have to go through one of the 
PES, the Public Employment Services, from our network and register their job vacancy there. We then retrieve the metadata from these job vacancies into what is called an index to form this job vacancy interoperability platform. And then job seekers can search through this index using the job search engine. The full vacancy data always remains at the source, meaning in the uh, system, in the PEST system where it was originally created. Now, what are the next steps? First of all, on the job vacancy side, we will implement ESCO, which means quite a big task actually, because it requires all the public employment services to adapt their systems and to map their national classifications to ESCO in order to be compatible, which they are under legal obligation to do, as Henrik uh, explained before. We will also extend the network of Euris partners to press private employment services that will also participate in the exchange system. On the CV side, we will implement a similar system as for the job vacancies, meaning job seekers will be able to register their CV within one of the partner uh, systems and we will again retrieve the metadata from these CVs into an index to make it searchable. The CV, the URS CV database will remain but will behave as one of the sources that will feed into this interoperability platform. Now looking further into the future, we will be able to develop a semantic matching engine to do direct matching between the metadata from the uh, CV index with the job vacancies. This semantic matching engine will use the full power of ESCO, meaning the occupation terms, the skill terms, but also the uh, synonyms, alternative terms, the relationship be between the, the terms, uh, inferred in information, and so on. So, the richer ESCO becomes, the more powerful the semantic matching engine will be. Now, this semantic interoperability platform for CVs and job vacancies will enable the creation of many new services. I already uh, told you about the semantic matching. We will also be able to link skill gaps that result from a mismatch between a CV and a vacancy to learning opportunities, thanks to the third pillar of ESCO. We will also enable career guidance. Of course, the data contained in the interoperability platform is a wealth of information for analyzing the European labor market, forecasting skill shortages and surpluses. The free text information contained in the CVs and the vacancies can be used to, as an input to enrich ESCO in the future. And other added value services can be developed such as mobile applications by URES or by any of our partners. Now, to finish, I would like to show you a small illustration of what I just explained with an example coming through from the European Job Days portal, which is a kind of side product of the US portal, specifically dedicated to events, recruitment events, and in particular, virtual job fairs. On this portal, uh, job seekers can create a profile where they can add skills coming from ESCO. And similarly, employers can include ESCO skills into the requirements uh, for the jobs that they are offering in an event. And based on that, we calculate a matching score. This matching score is used to recommend jobs to the job seekers attending the event, the jobs that are best matching their profile. It is also used as an indication before job seekers apply for a job 
to gently discourage them from applying to jobs that do not fully match their profile. And finally, it is used by employers to pre-select the candidates that are the most relevant for interviews during the event. So that's all. I hope we have managed to do this in 10 minutes and we will open the floor for questions. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Eurus loves ESCO. I like that. That was a very good angle. Thank you both very much for the presentation. Um, we have about five minutes before the coffee break. That's deliberate. And after the coffee break, you'll have another 10-minute presentation followed by five-minute question and answers and a final one. Again, this is going through very specific issues. Here, it's about Eurus. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes and ESCO and how this links together. Any questions on anything that you saw in the presentation? Any doubts? Oh, lots of questions. So we have three. Could you take the gentleman at the back and then we'll go to the lady in the middle and then we'll go to Gert. Hello. If you uh, could please stand up. Your name. Hi, my name is Romier Dresto, and uh, so my question is, uh, uh, do, you, uh, do you have any plans to open this to, uh, to employers, for employers directly to, uh, uh, to post to, uh, uh, the jobs and their, uh, their job vacancies to, uh, to the portal? Thank you very much. Let's take the lady in the middle. My name is Claudia Pleimau. I come from Austria. Uh, I'm puzzled by uh, you saying there would be an obligation for uh, national uh, public employment services uh, to match their national systems onto um, ESCO. Uh, will this be in the future or are you suggesting this already now? Very good. And then we have a final question here at the front. Uh, yeah, Gert here. Uh, I have a practical question. You're talking about semantic matching engine. Um, how does, um, in the matching, which are the criteria to decide there is a match or not, because it's semantic based? Over to you. Okay, so first the question of employers. <clears throat> so, URES is, as I said, a cooperation between employment services. It will continue to be a cooperation between employment services, even though we open for private employment services. There is a, a question of quality control that cannot perhaps be done directly by the Commission. So uh, employers will most probably also in the future have to pass via some kind of, uh, at least a partner recognized by URES. So not all employers directly, but through a partner. Uh, secondly, um, so the obligation, well, the obligation is to uh, participate in the interoperability platform. That obligation is already there today when it comes to public employment services and job vacancies. It's not a question of having an obligation always to use ESCO. We will use ESCO for this, uh, for, for the interoperability and the matching but it's not an obligation <clears throat> for everyone to use ESCO as such. There could be mapping made from other classifications and taxonomies to ESCO. For the matching... To ESCO. Today it's a, it's a mapping to ESCO, yes. But we will go a step further. We, we, we want to use ESCO for the matching, of course. And regarding your question, Gerd, um, for the, the uh, criteria that are used in the semantic matching engine, uh, it will be, of course, based on the ESCO uh, skills and occupations contained in the CV and in the vacancy, but also uh, other criteria such as experience level, education level, language skills, uh, etc. But you will see uh, uh, an example of that and get more explanation in uh, Christoph's presentation, which is one of in the next sessions. Um, so he will give a bit more insight into that.
Uh, another question to the mapping to the national systems. Uh, are you planning to map uh, version zero to the national systems or is this something that will happen with version one, for example? And the second question about the uh, uh, semantic matching engine or the software behind that engine. Could you maybe explain what kind of software you're using if you're developing one of your own or if you are using uh, a software that is used also by other public employment services? Yes, sorry, my name is Petra Ziegler and I'm from Austria. <laughs> Uh, from 3S. <laughs> so for the mapping, I mean, the, the development of this portal is something that will happen now uh, step by step. It's a gradual uh, thing. Uh, and uh, so it will sort of happen in, 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 in parallel with the development of ESCO. So we will, of course, we already start using ESCO version zero for, for, for the EURES platform. And those who are, of course, interested in making mappings already now are more than welcome. But the final obligation to make this may, may come later. The, the legal instruments are not in place yet. Very good. We have a question there, and then I need to point you towards the Twitter wall. But please, first. Brigitte Bouquet from, from France. Is, this, is it a, an evaluation uh, of the system? Do you evaluate this implementation? In which way? How is it quality assured, please? Um, I don't the, uh, no, no, but I mean the, the technical, the evaluation, how this um, technically the quality for instance we are uh, working now very uh, hard on improving the quality of the uh, the existing platform for instance we put in place mechanisms to to check that the data we we get is correct and always uh, available etc if that is what you mean does, does that no? answer the question in a way yes thank you okay, okay. very good and um we have a Twitter wall. Oh, it's number two now. You might need to move your head just slightly, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is the match a sliding scale with a target match level, e.g. 80% match? Um, ESCO EU, can employers, seekers set a match level? The person who wrote that tweet, are they in the room? No, but... Is the question clear to you? Um, yes, I mean, uh, we're not quite there yet to, uh, into the details of how the uh, user interface will be so that uh, you can have a slider to set your matching level, but that's exactly the kind of feature that we would have in, in mind. Um, of course, this is uh, not going to be in place for, for several years, so we, we're not into that level of detail yet. And as I said before, you will see a demo of a prototype in um, the next session or the, or the following one, so <laughs> be a bit patient there and you will know more. Very good. Unless there are any other questions, I would like to release you all for coffee. Oh no, there is another. Which one? Top one. Okay. EUCA Brussels, are you in the room? Interesting, these tweets are coming from outside. Here we go. In the near future, Europass CV, Euros Services, and at esco.eu will be integrated. European job search and mobility goes to another level. What do you have to say about that? That is true. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, EUCA Brussels, whoever you are, thank you for that statement uh, and endorsement. But Wilfred, we have a very last question for you. Then I must release people for coffee, otherwise they'll lynch me. Just a specific question on timing. So the Europass CV, I guess, is not used yet in Eures. When will it be used? Uh, next year or? It is How already. Um, it, it has been uh, already uh, since uh, since the beginning of um, of the CV online tool in, on the Eures portal. The Eures CV is fully compatible with the Europass CV. The fields are uh, completely aligned. Okay, I have been promised a 30-second intervention. No, I'd like to, to specify a little bit uh, the, the Commission position when it comes to the use of, uh, of ESCO. 
in particular under URES, we have no intention whatsoever to force one way or another one member states' public employment services, even private employment services, to use ESCO and to replace their national or specific classification systems with ESCO. We are using and will be using ESCO in URES to allow the interoperability between our labor markets. So it means that for the member states, and in particular the PESs, which are hosting URES, because they have the obligation to participate in the interoperability platform, they will ipso facto, and it might later on be spelled out in a specific legal text, but ipso facto, they will have to map to ESCO and to map from ESCO. Which means that, for instance, when Jean-Christophe Bonin, the URES manager from France, will be sending the French vacancies, job vacancies, to URES, he will have to map his French vacancies to ESCO. And in turn, when he will be retrieving the vacancies, for instance, from Austria or Germany, using their own classification, which is completely different from the Rome, he will have to map from ESCO in order to translate them into the language which is used in France. This is what it means, correct? Okay, so, ipso facto, ESCO will be used in URES. And as you know, URES is growing and growing and growing in importance. And there are figures which Enric and, and Pascal could not pass on to you because there was not enough time. But on average, every year, URES uh, performs some 150,000 uh, placements. So can you imagine the number of matches behind these figures and so forth? So URES will be growing and growing in importance. And since four years, for instance, we have seen the number of visitors to the URES website, the, the specific job sites, multiplied by 10. So it also gives you an indication of the extent to which ESCO will be used. Very good. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Henrik and Pascal, thank you very much for that.